Hey Water Signs, thanks for coming along for this reading. This is your divinely inspired creative cycle reading. It's not just for if you're like an artist or you know a designer. It's for anyone. We're all creative. We're all doing our life and creating something with our life. So this uh, spread is set up to hold the symbolism of the the Wheel of the Year and the Pagan Holidays, the symbology of um, the themes that I'm going to be reading on are directly related to the eight Pagan Holidays that correlate with things like the Equinox um, and the Solstices, one of which we just recently experienced last week. So. We'll also look at the idea of a more divine energy uh, coming into this that's really outside of the, the uh, pagan system. So this is a, an energy that came into the world that, you know, evolved as part of our evolution um, beyond this system. So this, the pagan system is more attuned to, like, the sun itself as... Um, the source of creation and this is looking at more of a cosmic presence that can be drawn upon here in this realm to provide creation as well to lead creation so this could be you know your muse or just um, an energy that you can work with that's really supporting you like a guide through this time So this is an intuitive reading, but if you are interested in crystals, because this center card does feature one, I will read that, as well as the Ascended Master, in case you want to look up more about this Master, if you are looking for um, an energy to connect with, um, or an example that could provide some insight, you know, in their how they lived their life for for you. So you have Lao Tzu and Zinsight is the the crystal. I'm sorry, it's Zinkite. Okay, so I'm just kind of soaking in the initial messages that want to come through. This energy is so deep that I can almost feel it beating, like it has uh, a presence of, of like when you put your, your hand on your vein to take your pulse, like how you can feel your heartbeat through the pulse rather than just putting it on your chest. There's something about the closeness of like actually touching that vein. So it feels like something's coming to the surface that's very, that's been pulsating in you, that's maybe come from your heart actually, you know, and is aligned with your, your heart's truth that is getting closer and closer to, to, to really being, um, to being out there more, to being like circulated more through, through your daily life. There's even, you know, a, a little bit of that birthing energy coming through. Although this feels like, uh, I'm hearing like, um, it's in my blood, you know, like, like whatever this is, you know, I just, I can't not do it because it's just, that's, that's what I'm made of. And it's something about the blood. It's not like, oh, it's in my bones because that's even, um, something about that that's even more stabilizing, but this is like something of the now, like this is keeping me alive, it's in my blood, like this is what, if I don't have this, like I'm not going to survive type of thing. So this could be, you know, connected to career or what, what, uh, what brings you uh, monetary resources here. And it feels like there's been like this whole thing that you've had to put together, like all the pieces of the pie or 
whatever it is, it feels very holistic and you've been organizing something here that like it feels like it's really coming in to itself like it's being made whole now I'm going to look at your first card which is dealing with as you've come out of this last cycle what you've really accomplished and by assessing that what can you say you know I'm not going to take with me into the next cycle and what am I going to bring with me and you know even beyond uh, the the characters in this card what I'm more so drawn to is the the mist and the atmosphere of what's going on so it looks like um, there is this like there's this you know foreground of um, an energy that feels like at once it is um, it's fighting and then it's playful and maybe it's a playful fight or is it a fight is it play you know sometimes how animals play or even younger children if you've been around them they they're they can teeter in that gray area where like are you having fun or is this getting scary for you you know are you okay are you happy playing like this and um, I, I feel like there is that energy where there's a lot of shifty energies that you're interacting with characters where it's like they're in that borderline, you know, like they're like they just won't take a position. They keep treading in that like, okay, I'm appearing as um, you know the bad guy, now I'm the good guy. You know, it, it keeps flipping in its duality uh, as they're toying with the, the gray zone, and somehow you're getting entangled with that. Like you, you are identifying with that and seeing yourself in that like you become that like you get pulled into that energy and you start to resonate with it and because you're a water sign that's what you do like you can't help but become who you're interacting with because you're so permeable in a way like you you can so easily identify with the nature of another person that you can see yourself in them um, you can see the human qualities of of this. So anyway, I didn't really want to highlight that so much, but I did start to go off on a tangent there. So I'm going to leave that alone for a while and get back into this atmosphere, which I feel is what you are really enjoying. Like there's something, so this would be like what you want to take with you. Um, there's something just about an atmosphere that you want to create that's that's cleared of that energy and doesn't have to have that energy in it anymore. It, it's just an atmosphere. There's no like human drama, no, you know, issues going on in that realm. It's you and the, the elements around you that feel more important than this human drama. Um, so what I'm getting here is that you may be finally come to a, coming to a point where you're, you are disengaging instead of fighting. You are learning, uh, the art of war perhaps and picking your battles and saying, you know, I'm just not going to play these games. I'm not going to fight this stuff. I'm going to have better clarity about what's really going on here and choose to not actually allow the not to change. Like you do acknowledge that you can't actually ever escape this. This is like an infinite looping of this type of energy. And you can focus on it and be part of that for an eternity. And you acknowledge that. Like, this could consume your entire life. Yet, in your heart, you know that this isn't what it's all about. You feel very much that there is a almost mystical purpose for you here and you're not going to get through the next cycle focusing here that you need to get more in touch with maybe the moon cycle itself your emotions how your thoughts and feelings interact in a way that can create beauty how they can serve the world in a way that not only restores it, but creates hints of magic and 
escape and fantasy and you know just that little extra wow factor to life like that is where you feel your attention really should be and that this type of energy can be cultivated by dealing with things that are a little bit more cosmic in nature you know perhaps working with systems like the phases of the moon can inspire you to stay more in tune with manifesting um, a reality that's closer to to these atmospheric qualities I've been highlighting and less concerned with the the infinite cycling of human drama. Now we're going to look at what's really that initial spark that you're getting that you feel like you can you can basically bet on like you're going to put all your resources towards because you know you're probably going to get a harvest out of it. So I'm hearing like return to wild getting getting back in touch with that a little bit but not but not over giving yourself to it like not fully committing to that sense of um, you know that complete rewild rewildly rewilding um, process or you know becoming um, oh like a hippie type of of thing or you know like a free spirit a complete child you know boho type child but there's a little bit of that here it, it, it is sort of basically like releasing yourself from the constructs of the world like your ties to anything that was binding you in your reality and and getting a little bit freer and pronouncing that a little bit more showing that quality a little bit more being just a little more natural maybe showing up actually physically in that way and in in doing that I think that it will help preserve and cultivate this this quality of life that you're seeking and this doesn't feel like just for yourself this is for like the world you know like you want everyone around you to live and breathe a more awe-inspiring reality and I think that you are trying to lead somewhat through example basically you see that that's very necessary and that you are seeing you're actually showing up in attunement with what you're um, you're preaching, whatever you're you're um, rallying for. I haven't used that term in a long time. Okay, so we are now going to look at any anything that you can still purify here and and secure, so that you can really co commit to what you're trying to do here. looks like your inner truth is really important and making sure that you have burned away um, any sense any any truth like inner truth that isn't serving you and protecting your inner truth in a way where I don't want to say that it seems threatening, but it it's not to be messed with. Like you're you want to be able to put your inner truth out there more and have it really shine and and be strong and understood for what it is, but you don't want to battle about it. You don't want to be in this energy about your inner truth. You want it just to kind of stand alone for what it is and and to not go on to not have to be challenged and I think in you presenting this it feels like you have to be so solid in it that you you would never feel like you even have to defend it like there is nothing to defend 
because you don't care. It's just your inner truth. It is truth. Like you're not at all worried about it. But there is this last vestige of saying, you know, I, I need to make sure that I burn away anything that may that I may be feeling is dishonest or doesn't provide, doesn't isn't in alignment with this truth. And again here I'm seeing you, wow, I just noticed that yeah, double dragons. That's pretty intense. <laughs> um, so I'm seeing you kind of showing up in that energy of um, something beyond, you know, a little bit more supernatural. It's, this is a, this is operating outside of normal world. You know, you are stepping into that otherworldly type of element um, with this venture. Okay, let's look here now at um, where you're balancing through this process, things that could be more active and maybe what needs to be paused, whatever really wants to come through here. I get um, a little bit of like the festival vibe off of this, the um, the counterculture um, type of vibe of of exploring uh, the the mind altering substances that are out there. I'm not sure if I really want to keep going with this this message that's coming through. Um, okay, so I see you observing this. So this may be something that you are aware of. Maybe you have participated in. Maybe you see this in some way. Like you, you maybe you used to do something like this. Like you're, you're looking at this. So there may be an element of something in your past um, that that you're drawn back to that holds something about this process for you. You know, as I was talking about kind of becoming more natural and and more wild and in this energy, this is kind of that too, like getting back to being more of a free spirit and and realizing that you have kind of stepped aside from that and that I feel like you used to enjoy that, and there was even probably a sisterhood. Maybe you had friends that were involved with this, and there was a, you know, a playfulness to it, a, a youthfulness, and a, a little bit of community about it. And, you know, it seems fine on its own. It doesn't seem like you're, you view your world as any less than compared to this, but I think you're, you're looking back on some former experience that you found... Uh, enriched your life in a way because it set it outside of what's normally expected of how one lives lives their life. So it doesn't have to be about this culture in particular for you. It could be, you know, any past experience. But you're you're definitely acknowledging like there's something here that, and it's the spirit of it that you want to you know, reabsorb, reclaim a little bit and and bring that in to to your reality again. Now we're gonna look at the position of where you're really finding pleasure and freedom to stay committed to to what you are creating. And there's a, a <laughs> There's a sense of, uh, which if you're a Pisces, if you're part of this water tribe and you're showing up as a Pisces, uh, the, um, the martyrdom here, like the self-sacrifice. So you may be really, really uh, identifying with that a little bit and identifying with this... Um, energy of being a little bit more purified, a, a little more in your higher self qualities. And I don't feel like you entirely feel secure in this. Like you're not quite sure why you're stepping into this role and 
you know that it, it's not easy. Um, you're not 100%, I think, committed to it. But it, it's sort of like this martyrdom thing. Like, you can't help but put yourself in this role. It, I think you've probably examined a lot of other options, and this is sort of what's left. And you can't really deny it anymore. You know, it's maybe you've gone through cycles of trying a lot of other things, and they just won't work. <laughs> and so you, at last, are here. And this could just be kind of like the, the difficult aspects of what you're dealing with as well. So you may actually be having a little bit of struggle um, staying committed to this because you know that there is a bit of sacrifice and, and discomfort. But I think on the other side of that, you also get that through that, there is is like a growth of yourself that comes through like you 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 will gain something through through facing the challenge and if you're feeling at all fearful about it uh, or just hesitant about it there is it's almost like you know you're going to grow stronger and if you stay in the position that you're in you're not you'll have to live with feeling weak and so it, it's like you have to go through this this challenge basically now this position is really like the abundance that's going to come through this whole process and I see here a I feel like you are going to achieve something that you maybe didn't expect and You've, you've been kind of working at in a way that has been a lot about your energy and, and dealing with it relative to your environment and people in your environment and the different phases of your life and, and all of the, the struggle with it all. But I think what you're going to find is that there is like pureness that's going to come through this and simple truths and um and actually finding that you are you may actually find an inner child to you that you didn't really even know existed you may have thought that you were something all along you know and believed that that's who you really were and even you know, been identifying with that inner child, you know, wounded perhaps from childhood as a certain being, but maybe there was a, a, a miscalculation there of who or what that was. And you may be kind of seeing yourself in a way that you've never really seen yourself before. And it's refreshing and, and pure and just different. It feels very unexpected. So Oh wow, and you had Lao Tzu. So yeah, there may be something with like Asian philosophy too here that you may be really connecting with and and restoring the innocence of. Um, so just as you may have been distorted through our society and really feel, you know, kind of <laughs> like tossed around and, and kind of beat up a little bit, there may be something that you're actually, and it doesn't have to be about this specifically, but whatever you're working with may have been in that state as well. So you may really identify with that. And you may be helping to, through your self-sacrifice, help restore something here that was even lost to like another culture, you know, in, in respect for them. And in that, you kind of find a part of you, like an understanding of yourself that you never understood was there before. But other people may have. I mean, I think other people can see us very clearly. So now we're going to look at really what you've gained, like protection that you've gained through all of this by acquiring some resources.
what I'm getting here is that you've learned that you do need you do need to take time out like you can't just be on go all the time and you know fighting the good fight or whatever that there are times when you you really need to become just humble and simple and not in the busyness of life and and focus on um, somewhat of this energy but what produces this energy it's almost like there's a, a fire outside of you that really gets your blood warm that that really stirs you um, that really you know makes you feel passionate this is almost like um, baptism by fire in a way you know like it like you've advanced through a lot of the emotional turmoil and you've mastered that and now you're really in this realm of like spiritual fire uh, and, and you're looking at that as as something that you are honoring and respecting and that you know that you are in allegiance with that you are serving this higher purpose and your final card is about where your gratitude is and the wisdom that you have acquired that's going to then lead you to your new opportunity in the next cycle and it looks like you have really extracted something maybe through all of this that you can now offer other people and you've extracted things so that they're not entirely difficult to consume and overcomplicated. So it, like you've made something very palatable. And even if people can't mentally understand what it is that you're doing, even if you don't communicate it in that way entirely. I think what th the greatest thing that you can learn through this is the, the energy that you need to hold that communicates for you, that speaks for you, the vibrational quality that comes through uh, to other people that holds the essence of, of what it is that you're trying to do for other people. And I think that, you know, this is also part of the self-sacrifice because I do see that in the end, without you really intending, that this will also help you, it will help restore you. And it, it feels like you have been kind of tossed around and, you know, kind of mumbled jumbled all over the place. And this may be cycles that have been going on for some time. But when you get to this place that you're meant to be in, this, this role that doesn't necessarily feel completely like a role, it feels very authentic. Like you're, you're really able to be in your, in your, your honest truth. That you're going to feel very much yourself. You're going to feel very restored and and I think you're just going to be so grateful that you're not going to be out slaying and fighting dragons and being a dragon anymore <laughs> so I think that you know you're going to be really grateful for the inner peace tranquility and gentleness that you are going to learn to inhabit more and more. Okay, my dear, dear water signs, let's end the reading there. I thank you again for joining me, and please do check out any of the other playlists if you'd like to. I have lots of different readings amongst them. All right, take care.